Hey guys, I'm presenting today a very unusual chair that came to the shop. It's actually from Scandinavia in a broad sense, but more focused, it's from Finland, which is very unusual for me to see a, a, a Finnish chair that comes to the shop. We do get a lot of Scandinavian furniture, but not Finnish. So um, when I'm looking at this chair, I'm saying, how in the world did they, did they upholster something so thin? And so we're going to find out together. So in Scandinavia, we have um, Denmark, we have Norway, we have Finland and Iceland, pretty much. Um, and so we're going to focus on Finland and their design, which is going to be interesting to, to, to deconstruct this. So I have up here a, a regular American-made chair, and I wanted to point out some major differences um, to this. Um, well, first of all, it's higher, it's a cane back. I, I don't think I've ever seen, have I ever seen cane in a mid-century furniture chair? I don't think so, maybe. But uh, usually it's very sparsely upholstered, which isn't easy to do. As you guys, if you're upholstering, you know mid-century furniture is going to be challenging for you. So uh, because of that, it looks easy, but it isn't. I still don't know. We're going to explore together how they, how they put this on. I still don't know how they did it because it doesn't seem to be any screws attaching to this at all. So you sometimes, on, on other, you've seen me deconstruct other Danish furniture that has backs like this, but that they're, they're screwed in. You can see there's little plugs on the outside. I want to show you something. No plugs, right? No plugs for screws, right? So you've seen other Danish furniture that has those little plugs. You take them out, you unscrew a Phillips head screwdriver or something, and the, and the screws come out and the back comes off. Not this one. So it's going to be really interesting to do this on camera. I'm kind of putting a lot of stress on myself and pressure to make sure I know how to do this. So now this one here, I just wanted to point out some differences. Um, notice how much larger it is, right? And so I'm going to turn it around sideways. But I wanted to point something out. Both of them are pretty well constructed pieces of furniture. Um, there's one thing they have in common. One, one, one thing that all fine furniture has in common is this 12 degree slope slant on the back on the, on the seats, okay? Now on dining room chairs, usually, if you notice, I'm going to turn this around, this is flat. This looks flat from this direction, but it really isn't. It has a saddle seat. So, so far, one of the major differences between the design as far as comfort goes, is that this is saddled, this isn't. I just want to explain a little bit more about what's going on with this chair. This chair came to me with, I don't have the box cushion to show you right now, but it would look like a, a box cushion sitting, just sitting there, but it was attached to a wood, uh, wood piece of plywood. So the customer's trying to save a little money. It also was latex, and it also was just caved in. You wouldn't believe the mess it was, you guys. So they're gonna go to a, a slip seat. I'm not doing the box seat again, so a slip seat's just more like this, uh, but it's gonna be flat, see? This is not saddled on the front. So it's not as cozy as this one is, even though I'm putting more padding in this one. When you look at this, it's hardly any padding. This is going to have like a two inch piece of foam. This is going to have like a half of an inch piece of foam. But it just goes to show you how form, things in form can, act, can be comfortable. I mean, you can sit on a piece of uh, wood. If it's formed right, it's going to be okay. This just has such a sparse amount of padding in it. So it's really going to be interesting. The seat, even the way they put the seat on is different. I'll show you that in a minute. So let's put this down done with this, just to show you the differences sometimes. Let's get going on this. Um, let's, let's try to do the easy one for us to see. Okay. Now, one thing I, I, I always emphasize, if you've watched my videos, you know, I have six of these. It's always a good idea because when you turn this up like this, right, you can see a slight difference on the back. You see how it kind of goes over the over that back rail and there's a slight curve right here and this is more of a curve. It's slight enough so that you might want to mark it with a little F to indicate front. And I even go as far as to turn it over and put a little F right here. So that I'm gonna take all six of these apart, strip them down. I don't want to be messing later on and second guessing myself to see if I if I put it backwards. That's not a good thing. It's just good good habits, right guys? So so now I'm gonna just flip this up to take a look at, normally there are screws right in here. No screw holes, you guys. Isn't that interesting? I, I, how did they attach it? Did they glue it? I don't know yet. And then they have this little board here, right? An extra piece of wood that's screwed. I bet if I undo those, 
I'm going to show you. I, uh, I think this is so clever uh, because what it does is it saves you from boring a hole through a nice finished wood here and then having a client see or feel the hole even from the bottom. See how clean it looks? Uh, you know, the Scandinavian, real good Scandinavian furniture, another one word, clean, right? Clean. This is part of the clean. It's gonna... Actually, I just noticed a, some type of labeling in here that I'm going to try to look at in a minute. If I didn't notice it before. So I like labels. I like the history of pieces of furniture. So let's just see if that... Ah, look at that. Look at that, you guys. Look how they did that. That fit in there really snug. You probably didn't even need screws that fit in there so snug. Isn't that clever? So look how clean this is. No holes put in. The only, the only holes are in the inside. Right? So that's, that itself is very clever. So let's just get a profile of this chair. See how nice the workmanship. Okay, let's just... So I'm going to strip this all off. And I'm going to, I'm going to take this all the way down to the frame. Let me see if I can... No, I can't really read it unfortunately. Okay, so let's just put this aside for now. What I'm really interested, so we have, we've got the seat figured out you guys, right? But what I'm really interested in is this back. So <clears throat> the hole here is for people can lift the chairs up for, the, for people in the household can grab hold of the chair and move them very easily. Isn't that clever? That's very clever. And also for design, right? So you just now if I notice as I'm looking at this right away, there is a gap a little bit of a break here between right in here, which tells me that this is definitely separate. You have an inside back and an outside back. Okay? So what I'm gonna try to do is tackle the inside back looks to me like a panel. So let's see if we can lift that. So I have a suspicion that that's an upholstered panel that's put on with brads right from the front face that they put brads in and the only way you can do that is if you have a fabric that's a woven that that can take a brad through it and then the fabric separates and then you put the brad in all the way and then the fabric it like goes over the brad without ripping and you won't even know you did a brad in there so you can't use a vinyl if that's the case you couldn't use a vinyl on this so let's just see if we can get underneath this. Wow, it's tight. Let me just check. Yeah, it's a piece of wood of some sort that they have in here. It's not coming out easy, I can tell you that. Been in there a long time. I'm trying to be as careful as I can too because I have to reuse it. This is a very thin piece of wood that they use and it's custom now <coughs> for this. So knowing how it's attached or suspecting how it's attached, let's, I'm just going to feel this to see. I feel what's, what I feel the brads. The brads are stuck in there. So I've pulled the ply, I pulled the wood away from the brads and I can feel the upper portion of the brad in hand. So what I'm going to do now is see if I can remove the rest of this without ruining this. Wow, look at that. Okay, now watch what I do before I remove this completely, you guys. Okay, I know that it tape is here, and I know it tape is to the back. Probably some people at home are going, oh, come on, you're really going to put a T here for top? Yes, I am. Now, I trust the Scandinavian country so much with measurements that I'm not going to mark each one like with a one and a one and a two and a two and a two and a two and a three or four or five all the way up to six. They are interchangeable. That's how good I know that how well made these are. They're interchangeable so I'm not going to worry about that. Although on more traditional antique chairs I do number them like that uh, because each one seems to settle over time and even originally when they hand built these antique chairs especially in America they're all a little different. 
And I think that's the endearing part about traditional furniture too, by the way. I'm not saying there's anything bad about it. Okay, so now um, I'm just gonna, I'll clean this up later. I'll put this aside. This is the inside back. You can write if you want. IB for inside back, especially for beginners. Labeling is everything. Just label as much as you want because you know, as weeks go by, if, if, you're, if you're slow on a project, you might forget. And I think labeling is really important. Okay, so before I get to this other part, I want to clean this up a little bit. So there are these little brads that went right through like I suspected. And I'm going to, wow, these are really small brads. I'm going to bring it up if we can. You can hardly see it. It's about a half of an inch long. And it's almost like a pin a gauge on it. It's very small. I'm going to use a bigger, a little bigger. Um, let's just take all these out. There's, there's a lot of them holding that. And that's why it looks so clean, you guys, right? So that was the second thing on the, on the back, that, the outside back. And this is a little different, too. The outside back was on first. I'll show you that in a minute. And I'm not sure how they did it. But when I turn this around, you're going to see something very clean looking. You even know it's an old fabric, but you, you'll see it in a minute. Removing all these. How do I know I got all of them? I, I run my finger along very gently to make sure I got every one of them, which I did. Don't trust your eyes. Usually you can't see every, every one that's in there, but be careful when you do that. So right away now on the outside back, so another thing that's different, the outside back goes on first on this, which goes against the rules, all the other rules, right? That you should see in my YouTube videos, all the traditional furniture, the outside back's the last thing you go on. So actually the, ins the outside back's the first thing in this, in this case. So I wanna show you, look at how clean this is. Are you kidding me? Look at that. Nice and clean. It almost looks like a grain of the wood, for goodness sakes. And then I noticed this is pulling away just a little bit on the corner, which I'll probably attack first. But the other thing I can't figure out on this yet is how they got this line so clean, how they got these lines so clean. I can see where they cut. They did some cutting around here, and then they staple through here on this side and staple on the bottom, I see that. But what's still a mystery is, is these sections. So let's let's begin by undoing this corner. Let's see what they got in here. Ah, they've blind tapped. Okay, so they've got a cardboard tack tape. And they have, <laughs> this is really interesting because it's blind tack tape here, blind tack tape here, and a very, very difficult cut here to pull the fabric through right here. But let me tell you, so I'm going to explain something. Let's take this off first. See if we can take it off as careful as we can on the sides. This is interesting. They've only got an epoxy or glue. So what they did was they glued down their, their fabric like so, and then they glued the whole thing down like that. I'm going to do something a little different, you guys. I'm going to take a very flexible ply grip. That's that silver material that you've seen. Actually, put a piece here. I think it lasts a lot longer if it's put on correctly. And I'm just going to demonstrate just quickly how I'm going to do that. Okay, people, people are appalled when I do this with my scissors. But you should maybe have an extra pair of scissors that that you're trying to protect like at the tips for your cutting and then maybe have another this pair of scissors like you cut it cuts up like in half you want so what i'm going to do is when i put this on it's really important to make sure that you cut the ply grip has a very it's a sharper edge right here so what you want to do is you want to round out that edge okay then you measure it up before you start stapling just give get a measurement like so has to be pretty, pretty much to what this distance is here. And then on the bottom piece, make sure you round that off too. So that's going to go in here like so, stapled in, okay? And you can go to my other YouTube videos to see how we put ply grip on, or the online classes, we show that on the online classes. And then uh, the other piece is going to go on like this. But let's continue taking this off. 
So we know the mystery here is that it's attached on this side, right? Let's first, I think we can have good luck by just tearing this out. And then we're going to go to the front and just undo the stages. See if we can. Now, those are really embedded. Instead of boring you guys, what we're going to do is just tear this. Ooh, I'm glad I did that because this is interesting. Aha. So, look at that. So what they did, they actually continued the tack tape through here. They went all the way with the tack tape. And what they did was they gave themselves enough fabric to pull around. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, this, this is really clever. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the rest of this off. I'm going to show you something else that's interesting, you guys. I I'll clean this up later, but... There was actually no filling in this at all. Nothing. They, they went right over the wood. Isn't that interesting? And, and I think the reason they did that is they just wanted that really clean look. Uh, I cannot believe, knowing that now, how long this lasted because um, it has to be put on tight if you're going to do this, something like that, which we're going to try to duplicate exactly. Um, I'm tempted to put a little half a layer of cotton in there. We'll see. I might do the first one like that. Because the, every instinct is telling me never to go over wood, just wood with fabric, right? But when I see how long this lasts, it's very interesting, isn't it? So I wanted to feature this today to show you the difference in Scandinavian furniture or what we call mid-century furniture. Um, just to show you. And I, then I'm going to take some teak wood oil for the customer and I'm going to go over this whole thing and it's going to bring that wood right back to, to its original. So um, I thought that was interesting. Maybe, maybe we could feature another uh, YouTube video on how to upholster these. I haven't had the fabric yet so we're not sure if the timing could be right on that. But I think what I wanted to show you is how important it is to figure out how something put together and then to take it apart well so that you can put it back together again. Does that make sense? So. Uh, glad you tuned in and we'll see you next time.